I was a brand new captain, and I was looking for a new assignment. And I figured, Marine Barracks, London, or Marine Barracks, Road to Spain. That's what everybody, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking now this is going to be a great time. So they said, well, you got to go talk to your monitor. I was in AWS at the time, and I went up to go see, they said, it's, it's Captain McKay. And in headquarters, Marine Corps there, you, they had these cubicles. So you went in there, and I looked, and here's Captain McKay. And he looked up and says, what do you want? And it was so intimidating, I said, oh, no, sir, I'm just walking around. And I left. I, I took whatever he decided, he and Rocky Ball decided to give me, and that was it. That was my first in, in, and only previous experience as Colonel McKay. But I'm not going to go through his entire biography for you. I'm going to let him take the lead now as your guest of honor and main speaker tonight, Colonel John McKay. Please come to the lectern. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. I was actually uh, much kinder to General Healy. <laughs> I, I was known as the friendly captain's monitor. <laughs> Thank you very much for that introduction, General. I appreciate it very much. General Myatt, your efforts and significance and making this an all-important event, make it possible, viable, and extremely significant, is greatly appreciated and certainly recognized. Thank you, sir. <laughs> gold star mothers, gold star parents. I am honestly, truly humbled before the magnificence of your courage and your fortitude. You have done me a great honor. In peace, children interrogate their parents. War violates the order of nature and causes parents to inter their children. We live in a society that skirts around speaking of grief, even more so of death. All of you are poignantly enduring one of the most tragic events in any person's life. You are all in a dark, raw place. The meaningless flutter of platitudes, the misplaced focus of awkward proffering of condolences under the guise of others, universally, almost in, without a doubt, others' insignificant problems comparing to what you have gone through. This is coupled with fumbling offerings of insensibilities that, either, that neither grasp nor can even begin to appreciate your acute pain. These gestures, well-meaning, seriously, well-meaning, in principle, offer scant recognition that you, all of you, are in an unknown and terrible twilight from which you will never entirely emerge. You are literally transformed, forever changed. And let's be honest, the change is lifelong. And it's not always propitious. It is true that some degree of redemption 
a coming to grips of sorts with the mortality of your dearly beloved, and yes, with your very own mortality. Yes, that does occur. But that is but meager comfort, much less any recompense for the irreplaceable losses you have suffered. You have an absolute right to whatever you are feeling and whenever you are feeling it. Don't ever forget that, please. And it is further correctly said, to weep is to make less the depth of despair. Absolutely no one can, nor should they try to deny you that. I so dearly wish I knew each and every one of your departed loved ones. They are the children you brought into the world and unfailingly stood by. The loved ones you will forever cherish and whom you so lovingly adored. Each and every one of them has been viciously ripped from your arms, violently torn from your sides, unforgivingly rendered from you forever, physically removed from your undying adoration, from an indiscernible emotional and physical devotion of unfathomable depth. You are driven up on your knees by the overwhelming conviction that you have nowhere to go. The heart of grief, its most difficult challenge, is not letting go of those who have died, but instead making the transition from loving in the present to loving in separation. Just please always remember, in separation, in being loved and always remembered, they are forever in your hearts. I am no stranger to the loss of loved ones to abject violence. I'm not talking about the natural order of things. Nor will I ever be unburdened of grief. Grief is universal. Yet, and yet, grief is so intimately personal. How we grieve is who we are. And as were your loved ones, we each and every one of us present this evening is a unique individual. And as individuals, we grieve individually. Uniquely, each within our own private sphere of solitude. That does not assuage your pain, the reality of ultimate loss, 
but it does give due to the fact that we are each human individuals. The grave poignancy of the grief shared within this room puts on vivid display the increasingly rare type of individual your loved ones embody, embody and represent. Please note, I use the present tense. They are not gone. What they did represents something that is rare in this country. For they have done more and paid the ultimate price through their sacrifice in upholding the universal legitimacy of humanism. Individuals such as your sons, daughters, spouses, or siblings aren't supposed to exist anymore. And I'm not talking about their physical demise. Except in the honeyed remembrances of the greatest generation. They are real. The greatest generation is fallacy. Fallacy is too strong a word. Fantasy. Your presence this evening puts a lie to that whole tale. Perhaps more importantly, our gathering together on this evening of honor and remembrance unapologetically and openly displays a collective embrace of the critically important sensitivity of sharing that which all but defies being shared. And that is consolation and grief. The very commemorating of your loved one's lives provides a clear marker of the significance of each and every one of their singular presence on this earth. Though we walk together down a unpredictable, painful, exhausting, and draining path, we collectively seek hope. We seek the courage not to forsake hope. In loss, in loss as has been suffered by all in this room, in loss like that, hope hides itself. It disappears. Through our gathering together this evening, collectively commemorating our losses, we are challenging hope to once again show us the way forward. Garner strength from life's surges of the cruelest kind. Cast light upon the dark of despair through hope, love, faith, and the common bound of this shared evening. I am privileged beyond descriptions to have shared a few moments with you. Thank you.